Well, right before this pandemic uh, started, Aunt Mary, who lives in Missouri, she was driving down a rural road, and she passed what she thought was a bat that was dead in the middle of the road. But as she drove by it, she recognized, realized it wasn't a bat. It was a kitten. And, and she pulled over the side of the road. She went out, and honestly, she looked at this cat and thought, this cat is going to die, but I can't let this cat die by the side of the road. So Aunt Mary, if you know her, she's just a beautiful lady, scoops up this little kitten, takes it to a vet. The vet looks at the kitten, and, I mean, this, this cat was, this little kitten was messed up. Look at this picture here. Like, black eye, uh, face was ripped apart. They had to use stitches to put the, the and the cat, I say cat, the kitten was smaller than the palm of my hand. And so she, they, the vet said, listen, um, it's probably not going to live, but you could take the kitten home and at least care for it. So she did. Miraculously, he lived. In fact, she named him Batty because he looked like a bat in the middle of the road, and he's got these huge ears. And so when the pandemic hit, Aunt Mary, as many of you know, came to live with us during the pandemic, and she brought Batty with her, and he lived with us. And so she was with us for like three or four months, and then she went back to Missouri. But do you think Batty went back to Missouri? No. Batty stayed with us in our home, which was fine because we have another cat, and they got along great and all this. And Batty, Batty ain't doing too bad for himself. I mean, this cat has fattened up. He's doing well. He's strong now. And he's like, look at this picture. This is Batty right now. Is that this cat is living high on the hog. This cat has got it going on. And he is, I mean, he is living, living the high life. Far from the, the stripes in the middle of the highway, half dead. But do you think he's appreciative? Yeah, that's why you don't have a cat, right? Because you know cats are finicky. I mean, that's just what cats are. They're finicky. And so he never comes around. You're like, hey, and you try to pet him. And he's like, hey, man, no, no, you ain't petting me. You pet me on my terms. But I can tell you, he comes around twice a day. Twice a day he comes around. Yeah, you know when that is. It's when the food comes out. He comes around when the food comes out, and that's about the only time that we see him. Why? Because cats are like that. Cats are finicky. And I was thinking about that. I was thinking about, you know, Jesus <laughs> rescued us from the middle of life's highway. You and I were laying half dead Certain death was waiting on us, but thanks be to God, he stepped in the gap for us and rescued us and healed us and restored us. And so, I, But so often we can become a finicky follower. Come on, turn to somebody wherever you are and say, don't be a finicky follower. It, it is so easy for it to become about me in my relationship with Jesus. Like, I'm not coming around. I'm not thinking about God. I'm like, and then, then when I need something, I'm like, hey, what's up, my homie? Yeah, fist bumping Jesus. What's going on? And Hey, so anyway, now that I got you here, I was wondering if we're, we're not called to be finicky followers. No, in fact, this is nothing new. Not just Elijah, but let's go to just a story in the New Testament with Jesus where you may know the story well of him feeding the 5,000. He feeds 5,000 people with this incredible miracle. He leaves, he goes to the other side of the lake. The people are looking around for him. They can't find him. They get in boats, they go to the other side of the lake, and they show up and they're like, hey, we've been looking everywhere for you. And Jesus says to them, the only reason that you're following me is because I fed you. May that not be said of us but can we be honest how hard it is and how easy it is to live this life self-centered how easy it is to live for my my needs my wants and my desires and jesus calls us to live a life of self-sacrifice jesus calls us to live our lives for others in fact actually with that illustration i used we're not batty we're aunt mary like we are are called to lay down our lives to serve others in the name of Christ. If you're taking notes, write this down. I'd like for you to write this down because this is where we want to go for a few minutes. Sacrifice is laying down my life so that others might live. Sacrifice is laying down my life so that others might live. 